This is the QNAP QM22S 10G1T. It's a bit of a long name, but it's a pretty awesome thing if you have a QNAP NAS, and especially one of the newer ones that have the PCIe slot built into them. Let's take a look and see what it does. So as first things first, you will notice that this does have an active cooling solution. It is a fairly small fan, but that is actually to cool the two M.2 SSDs. On the back, you'll also notice the 10 gigabit ethernet connection, which makes this a, a caching card and a 10 gigabit NIC. And it's actually a pretty functional unit that we're gonna be talking about in the video, so do stick around. Now, I should get a couple of things out of the way. First of all, even though this is a 10 gigabit NIC, and I'm gonna be testing this with the uh, ASUS XGC100C, uh, which is also a 10 gigabit networking solution, I'm gonna be doing a full video on the uh, your 10 gig networking side of things on Monday, so make sure you're subscribed for that and check that out when it is available but this specific card is actually pretty interesting to install it all you have to do is remove the side for example i have this uh, ts253b nas which does have a pcie x4 lane available inside of it so you can throw one of these in and uh, basically it's a pretty simple operation just pull off the side put in the card you know attach the screw to the back and put everything back together, put your hard drives in, and then uh, you're pretty much away to the races. Setting it up in software is also really simple. You can set it up in multiple ways, which is actually pretty cool. You can do it in read-only or read-write mode, and you can try and accelerate random I.O. or sequential I.O. and change the bypass block size as well, so that is pretty cool. But overall, uh, if you're actually you know, trying to set this, this up as a caching solution, do take a look at what files you will be caching, and then you can kind of go from there. Now in my testing of this, uh, you will notice, as you can see from the footage here hopefully, that uh, when you're copying, for example, uh, something like a game folder uh, with all of your game files in it, the first time you copy that folder off, it will be pretty slow, it will be you know, your standard hard drive speeds as it is just ripping it from the hard drive. But uh, once you actually copy that even once, you will notice a significant speed increase. For example, I copied Counter-Strike Global Offensive's game files, and that was running about 70, 80 megabytes a second to my uh, local SSD. Whereas when I copied it the second time, you're looking at more like two, 300 megabytes a second. And the third time, it was actually three to 400 megabytes a second. So that caching is really doing a pretty good job. Now to see how well this works, I then copied PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds game files across. And again, the first time it copied across, it was fairly slow. But the second time, again, you were seeing a pretty consistent two to 300 megabytes a second. And the third time, you're seeing a pretty consistent three to 400 megabytes a second, even peaking upwards of 500 megabytes a second as well so really pretty impressive there. I then copied some of my archive of uh, videos that I've made in the past including the source material and copied that to my local SSD and then copied it again and again you're still seeing significant improvements on the second and third runs and I'd also mention that I then went back and copied Counter-Strike and PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds and I still saw that accelerated speed which is really nice it means that it doesn't flush the cache that quickly obviously I've got two 256 gig SSDs in this one at the moment Moments. So you mean it means in RAID 0 you actually have 500 gigs of caching space available So that's pretty damn decent now I should mention that at the time of filming this adding card not including NAS or the drives that go in it is around about 200 pounds or about 250 dollars at the time of filming which does make this a fairly expensive add-in and especially considering that the NAS itself is already going to cost you a couple hundred quid plus another couple hundred for drives and another hundred or two for the SSDs that would go in this does seem to make it a pretty expensive solution. But however, if you are repeatedly copying off multiple files or you just want to accelerate your random I.O. Uh, input and output for the, the NAS that you're running, then this could be a decent shout, especially if you already have one of these NASs and you want a bit better performance. If you are in the more enterprise side of things, this might also be a little bit better for you. As for home users, I doubt that you're going to be streaming and you know pushing a NAS that hard that you definitely need 10 gigabit networking and you know SSD storage. And of course, if you do get one of the four bay message you can still stick a standard two and a half inch ssd in one of your bays and use that as ssd caching as well so it, this is really only for the sort of more enterprise side of things where you need uh, extra fast storage and that sort of stuff 
Now, as I mentioned, I will be doing a full video on Monday talking about 10 gigabit networking and how it can benefit you, especially as a you know content producer like myself. So if you want to check that out, video, feel free to hit that subscribe button and make sure you've got notifications on as well. If you're interested in hearing any more about the card, the NAS or anything else, I've done a full review of this NAS, which you can check out on the end cards. And of course, feel free to check out the channel and I'll leave some links in the description down below to both. In fact, all of these bits here so that you can uh, check out pricing and availability ability when and where you watch this. Otherwise that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed the video feel free to let me know in the comments down below and hit that like button and if you're new here hit the subscribe button too. Also leave some other videos over here for you to check out and of course feel free to check out some of the other videos from the like six or seven hundred video catalogue that I've got. There's plenty of you to choose from. Otherwise uh, if you can support me using the Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links it does genuinely help me out. It supports me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis so if you do that that'd be fantastic and there's a whole load of links in the description down below too. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video, find it useful and informative, and uh, we'll see you all in the next one.